Okay, let's start video number two, and we're uh, picking up back uh, from the monthly payment. Now, uh, question letter D, it says, how, what will be his total interest charges after 15 years? Now, what that means is how much money is he paying over and beyond that $170,000 that he took out? So question D is actually kind of like a two-step problem. So what you have to do is take his monthly payment, which is $1,289.67. You have to multiply it by 12 and then you have to multiply it by 15. Now the reason why you're doing that is because you're trying to figure out how much did he actually pay back the bank. And so that ends up being $232,140.60. That's how much he has paid back. That's how much money he's given the bank in 15 years. Now, what was his total interest charges? That means how much money did he spend over and beyond? So that means you're going to subtract from the initial $170,000, uh, that's what he borrowed. And so the difference is your answer. So he paid an additional $62,140.60 over and beyond the $170,000. Next one. The Maxwell's family uh, annual salary is um, 120,000. 120,000 they took out of 275. Okay, so what is the monthly payment? So basically, what we're doing is the exact same question again. Uh, and so the monthly payment, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward here, and the answer to the uh, monthly payment is going to be $1,983.36. That's how much they are paying a month. Okay? Now, if the Maxwell family chose to write one check to the bank, including the monthly mortgage payment, so let me kind of highlight some of this a little bit. So the monthly mortgage payment, which we just found, it's this guy. Okay, the monthly property tax, which the annual property tax is four thousand, and then lastly the monthly insurance premium, which is one thousand five hundred seventy. Now, just to kind of give you a heads up, whenever you see anything that's not monthly, you need to convert to monthly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the tax rate, which is four thousand. I'm going to divide that by twelve, and that monthly tax rate is going to be, uh, I believe it's going to be. $333.33. I believe that's correct, and it is. Okay. Now, the other thing is the insurance premium. Well, 1570 Once again, divided by 12, that gives me $130.83. Okay. So what we're doing now, now that we've gotten our conversions, is we're going to take our monthly payment, which is this guy right here, our monthly insurance premium, and our monthly um, property tax, and we're just going to add it all together. So very simply, I'm just going to take $1,983.36 plus 130.83 plus $333.33. My final answer will be uh, the actual answer, which it'll be $2,447.52. All right. Now, the next thing is, what is the front-end ratio? Now, remember the front-end ratio, and that is all things that have to do with the house is the front-end ratio. So the front-end ratio, all things that we have to do, from, uh, do for the house or all the bills that deal with the house is what we just figured out for B. It's $2,447. Now, we're going to compare that to the monthly salary of the family. Now, we only have the yearly salary. So I'm just going to take the monthly salary, or I'm sorry, the yearly salary, and divide that by 12. I've got to convert to monthly. And when I do that, I get $10,000. I get $10,000. All right, so now what is the front-end ratio? Well, very simply, the front-end ratio is all the house bills, which we just found in Part B, $2,447.52, and I'm going to divide that by the monthly uh, payment, or, I'm sorry, the monthly um, salary, which is $10,000, and my answer is 24.5%. That is the front-end ratio. Now, the question is, will the bank give them the mortgage? Well, remember the magic number for the bank is 28% or lower. So 28% or lower, 24.5 is obviously lower. So the answer is a big fat yes. Yes, they will. All right, next one.
John is looking to take out a loan from BCF Bank or BCF. Yep, that BCF Bank. His gross pay is four thousand five hundred eighty. Here's a lit now front end ratio. We just talked about that. Now remember, front end ratio is all things that deal with the house. So the estimated property tax, that's a house thing. The estimated mortgage, that's another house thing. The estimated housing cost or housing insurance, that's a house thing. So we're going to add all those numbers up and we're going to divide it by 4,580. So all these numbers divided by 4,580 and our answer ends up being the front end ratio is 26.2%. Now, this is just like the last question. And so, will the bank give them a loan? The answer is yes, because it's lower than 28%. So, yes. Now, the back end ratio is all the bills, and it's on your formula sheet. So, all the bills. So, that means the car insurance, the car payment, the credit card uh, bill as well as the cell phone bill, all of this gets added and divided by 4,580. So when you do the division, your answer ends up being 48.4%. All right. Now, would the bank give them a loan? Now, under the back-end ratio, let me write it right here, it has to be 36% or lower. Now, that's 84, uh, that's 48.4%, obviously higher, so the answer is no. The bank would not give them a loan if they use the back-end ratio. Now, in your opinion, what could John do to get uh, his back-end ratio lower? I would say a couple things. First off, um, maybe uh, probably the easiest thing would be is to lower his credit card bill. That would probably be the easiest thing to do, and then maybe get... Uh, you know, cheaper car insurance. You know, it's just something like that. Okay. Moving on. Alan and Alma uh, estimate their total cash inflow for the year will be forty-five thousand. They plan to spend their income as shown below. All right. So, uh, what we're doing is figuring out the monthly living expenses based off their monthly uh, payments, or I'm sorry, monthly salary. Now. You're given a yearly salary, so very simply, I'm going to take 45,000, and I'm going to divide that by 12. And when I do that, I get my uh, monthly salary of 3,550. Okay. Now, very simply, what you're doing is you are finding all of the percentages. So, like for example, the first one, Ford uh, f food. Sorry, not Ford. I'm going to multiply by 3,750. So all I'm doing. It's just multiplying to figure out what would be a good living expense. So I'm just going to start multiplying. So that's all I did. I took all the percentages and multiplied it by 3,750. So this represents all of the money that's going out in their budget. Now, what was the total net income for the month? Well, we already figured that out. That was uh, 3,750. That's how much money they're uh, they're making a month. Now the question is, what were the total monthly expenses? I'm just adding all of this information up. I know I'm writing weirdly, but I'm using my mouse. I'm adding all that information up, and I end up with $5,100. Now, they have $3,750 to spend, and they're spending $5,100. So obviously, they are very much over budget. So how much money was left for play money? Well, after all the bills get paid, <laughs> They have nothing, so they so the answer would be zero, and the conclusion is they are over budget. So they need to uh, 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 they need to spend less. That's what they need to be. All right. All right. The last thing I'm going to do here is the credit card one, and so with the credit card one, very simply, uh, you guys have seen this before. Ten days times 150. 18 days times $362.47, three days times 553. Add all those numbers up, and when you add them all, the, all those numbers up, you get $9,686.42, which I'm then going to divide by 31 days. Now, the reason why it's 31 days is because it's right here, 10, 18, 3, that's 31. So question number 10, the answer is what is the average daily balance? And the average daily balance is going to be $312.47. Now, the next question is find the finance charge. Now, remember, the finance charge is 
the average daily balance, which is this guy right here, times the MPR, which is the monthly. Now, the APR is 15%. So off to the side here, I'm going to take 15%, and I'm going to divide that by 12. And when I do that, it's going to be... 1.25%. So to answer this question, it's going to be the average daily balance, which is $312.47 times 0 0.0125, because we've got to convert our decimal or our percentage to a decimal, and you get $3.91. And I'm looking at the time, and we are over time, so we need to stop this video, and I need to make another one. Thank you for watching. For watching.